Alright guys, it's Quinn's ideas here. And now that I've had some time to calm myself down from my initial reaction to the trailer, Show it! Show it! Show it! Ah! I'm ready to give you my thoughts on everything that I saw. Now I know that there's going to be countless videos out there on the internet breaking down every single little detail of the trailer. Now I've been giving you guys detailed breakdowns of the Dune book series for years now and following this film since the very beginning and I've given you tons of breakdowns so if you want more of that type of analysis from me go and look at the stuff that I've done on the books. Here I'm going to be approaching this from kind of a more emotional angle and just telling you guys what I feel about what I saw and also giving you guys a little bit of information on what's going on or what I think is going on in all these little scenes. Much of it is very 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 close to the book. So the trailer opens up with Paul Atreides, and we see that he is seeing Chani, um, kissing her, he's seeing her in the desert. Um, especially the scene with her standing right there, that's not a real scene because the Fremen would never just stand out in the open desert uh, in the sun. That is definitely a dream, and you can see he's waking up from the dream right there. So this moment here, I imagine, is before the Reverend Mother arrives on Caladan. So the Dune book opens up with Caladan, the homeworld of the house of House Atreides. You've got Paul asleep in bed, and the Lady Jessica comes in with the Reverend Mother, and they peek in at him, sleeping in the bed. And they recognize that he's not sleeping, he's pretending to be sleeping, or at least the Reverend Mother can tell. And then the Reverend Mother says, dress him, it is time for him to be tested. So I think that is what we're seeing pretty much in this trailer. We're seeing Paul having dreams about Chani, just like in the book, thinking about all the stuff that he's thinking about, human nature and all that stuff, and then the Reverend Mother of the Bene Gesserit coming to test him. Now, if you don't know what the Bene Gesserit are, if you're not super, super familiar with Dune, I'm sure you've heard the, the phrase, the, the word Bene Gesserit. Um, they are a secret order of women, a matriarchal order, a society that secretly rules a lot of the goings-on in the universe. They've been breeding noble houses for many generations for a specific goal. And that goal was more or less Paul without giving too much away. Except there was, it's kind of a little bit messed up because Jessica, Paul's mother, betrayed them. Paul was meant to be a girl and his son or her son would have been what they were looking for, the Kwisatz Haderach. But since Paul is a boy, he has been trained in the Bene Gesserit way by his mother, Jessica. They have to test him, they have to give him the test to see if it's gone too far and to see if he's still human. So it's essentially a pain test, right? It's, it's to see if he can override his pain, and I've talked about this multiple times. She says it's to test if you are human. An animal will gnaw off its own arm or leg to escape a trap, but a human can override any nerve in the body and you should be able to withstand this pain. So that's a very, very important scene. And then also the very, very famous line from the book, what's in the box? Pain. Right, and that's a multi-layered metaphor because she says, remove your hand from the box and die. That is the only rule. Um, because it's like you can't remove yourself from this pain. You have to endure what is ahead. And if you remove yourself from it, you will die in a real sense. And we know what becomes of Paul if, we, if you've read the later books. And I won't spoil it, but you can watch my Ultimate Guide series for those of you that haven't read it. But yeah, if you remove your hand from the pain, if you try to move away from it, you die. Stagnation is akin to death, and that's one of the key themes in Dune as well, especially as the books continue. So it's multi-layered when she's saying what's in the box, remove your head from the box and die, it's the human test, it's the pain test, it's all of those things. And also one thing that really, really impressed me was the shields. I love the shields in this trailer, the Gurney Halleck and Paul training scene. Later on, we see Duncan Idaho doing some severe badassery with the shields. I'm just really excited that they didn't remove the shields, that they look really good. The, the shields have never been done properly in any Dune thing, and the sci-fi miniseries, they didn't have the money for it. The David Lynch Dune, it was just, you know, we were, it was a different time. The CGI wasn't there, but here they look great. And can I also say, since we're on this subject, the action sequences that we're gearing up to see look phenomenal. So there are some pretty big action moments in the first Dune book. 
but this is this movie here is only half of the first Dune book, right? So what we're seeing basically here is I'm thinking the Battle of Arakeen. Hey, it's me, Trollion, and I'm just cutting in from the future to say that Quinn is wrong as usual. That's not the Battle of Arakeen. The Battle of Arakeen is a completely different battle. This is the first battle when the Atreides got attacked by the Harkonnens in the beginning of the book. The Battle of Arakeen is until the end, which Quinn doesn't know because he's an idiot. Arakeen. And I don't want to give away too much about what goes on in the Battle of Arakeen, but it is a battle on Arrakis between essentially the Harkonnens and the House Atreides. And it's pretty epic. A lot of stuff go goes on. It's brutal. Um, you can see burning palm trees here. This could only be at the Arakeen Palace, I think. Um, so, because, you know, that wouldn't be growing at some random place on Arrakis. So, yeah, that looks absolutely... The, the, all of the armor and the, the soldiers look incredibly epic. It just looks brutal and badass. And what is really, really going to be awesome about this is... We're so used to seeing these types of epic sci-fi battles in like Marvel movies where there's like Disney cuts out every single drop of blood. That's always been one of my biggest problems with Marvel movies is that like you have like a bunch of people getting slaughtered and there's not a single drop of blood. Well, in Doom, there's blood in the trailer. So we know there's going to be a lot more blood in the movie and we don't even have the rating for this movie yet if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. We don't know if it's R or PG-13. Let's hope R. Let's really, really hope for R, because like, if we can get an R-rated movie, we can really go to all the places that Dune needs to go with, go to. Now, Dune is a brutal book. It's about a lot of, it's about humanity, so it's very, very brutal. There's brutal things that happens. There's violence. Um, so yeah, I mean, an R rating, I feel like, would be deserved to effectively uh, deliver what what Frank Herbert was trying to go for. But yeah, going back to just the general aesthetic of the battle sequences, I love it. It's got that Villeneuve feel. Um, it, it looks awesome. The thing about Dune, the book, is that the action is downplayed. Frank Herbert lets the action be the backdrop. But I was saying months and months ago when we were talking about this movie, when we were talking about all the Sardaukar soldiers that were cast and named on IMDb, that was indicative of the fact that the battle sequences here were going to be very, were going to be moved to the forefront. And that makes sense when you're doing a movie, a, a visual medium, a visual medium needs that. Whereas a book, you can just say, this happened, and you don't re really have to go into detail, and Frank Herbert can focus on the philosophy of it. But Denis Villeneuve, can show it and he can show how intense it was and how much they lost and all of the people that died because spoiler alert just for like 15 seconds in but minor spoiler in in the dune book at in the battle of arakeen there's a lot of atreides soldiers that end up trapped in a cave and they end up dying in that cave which I don't think the David Lynch movie or the Dune miniseries did that. But can you just think of that type of death? That is brutal. That is so brutal. That's merciless. And it really drives home how merciless the Harkonnens are. They didn't just want to destroy House Atreides. The Baron Harkonnen wanted Har House Atreides to suffer. And they will get into the feud, I'm thinking. Oh, well, of course, they have to get into the feud of House Harkonnen and House Atreides and why it is such a big deal. Um, because we do see that they are pointing to House Atreides' Greek ancestry. So you have the Reverend Mother saying to Paul that none of your ancestors could learn how to follow properly. So House Atreides traces his ancestry all the way back to Greece. And in the book, it talks about Leto's father, who that might be actually Leto's father's grave or something. This sequence, whatever it is, is not in the book. But regardless, they're discussing the Atreides' ancestry, so they will definitely be discussing the feud between House Atreides and House Harkonnen, and I cannot wait to see it. So, quite honestly, this trailer looks pretty darn amazing. The costumes are awesome. Duncan Idaho, I'm sold. Jason Momoa, I'm totally sold as Duncan Idaho. Amazing. I can't wait to see him be super badass. Oscar Isaac, I was sold a minute ago, but I'm completely sold on his look. Timothée Chalamet is the most perfect Paul Atreides ever. The most perfect Paul Atreides ever. Alec Newman does not compare. Uh, Cal McLaughlin does not compare. He is absolutely Paul Atreides in my mind. Zendaya looks amazing as Chani. And I'm so sorry to any Zendaya fans that I might have offended early on when I said I didn't know a lot about her like a year ago or however long ago when it was first announced that she was doing this character. But the look of her as Chani is perfect. She is perfect. And you guys aren't ready for how badass Chani is. Chani is 
so awesome. Chani is a killer. You don't want to mess with Chani, right? She's Fremen born, born in the deep desert, and <laughs> she's not playing. She didn't come into play, and I'm, I'm so excited to see her be a boss, as well as excited to see the Lady Jessica be a boss. So we see a few hints of Lady Jessica in this trailer. We see a lot of really grave looks from Jessica in this trailer because, look, here's the thing about Lady Jessica. Everything that happens in Dune is because of her. And Aaliyah, her future daughter, points to this in the third book or something. She says, do you think if my mother, she says, if my mother wasn't, if my mother was a simple woman, as you claim, then none of this would be here. She would have had me first instead of Paul. Like, the, the she would have never rebelled against the sisterhood. None of this would have ever happened. So everything that happens is because of Jessica. Because Jessica chose to love her Duke instead of just using him and the way that the Bene Gesserit won it, won it she doomed him. I mean, <laughs> essentially, and, 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 and because of her choosing to have a son and train him in the Bene Gesserit way, she condemned Paul to suffer the terrible fate of prescience. And you can't even begin to understand how terrible that is until you understand and read the books and realize what it actually is to know the future. To know the future is to be trapped by it in the most terrible way. And I can just tell that Denny Villeneuve gets it. And I'm so excited. And also, another note. I love the fact that they're building up Duncan Idaho. I know we talked about Duncan Idaho a little bit and how he looked, but I love the fact that they're building him up as a character and a friend of Paul Atreides. They look, they seem really close, and that is very important to build that relationship. It's very important for a number of reasons, and I'm sure the book readers understand. And I guess another comment I, I can make about this trailer is that the CGI. CGI, well, of course, CGI has gotten so good at this point that you can't you, you you don't even expect bad cgi if cgi is bad in a movie it's just like throw the whole thing away but like this is like phenomenal i freaking love it it's just it looks so good and then the scale of everything the scale of the desert the real dunes like the sand the ships in the background like the opening sequence of blade runner 2049 if you ever look at it it's like you just he's just like flying a ship through like the, the, the this grand giant like cityscape thing and it's just huge and doom should feel the same way if not even bigger and okay so i've been saving talking about this to i guess the end of the video let's do this the sandworm whoa the sandworms look phenomenal i really really first of all first of all more accurate than the david lynch ones sorry it's a hole with glistening white spoke teeth within it so it does would look like an eye kind of so that is because it's kind of like it's almost like a filter mouth almost it looks like but those are very very razor sharp teeth all those little teeth are what chris knives are formed uh we see paul atreides holding up the chris knife here yeah th that someone took that from that one of those things mouths right freaking shy halud right and there's i know someone i i heard someone say oh the worm's too small it's not big enough that looks pretty huge to me, and I'm not sure exactly which sequence sequence this is in particular. I think this might be Paul and Jessica, maybe, or if it's not Paul and Jessica, then it's some like later moment when Paul is doing more stuff with the Fremen, which I think it's more likely considering how they're dressed. Um, which means it might be some added sequence because they wouldn't have they wouldn't be showing Paul's worm riding sequence yet. I don't think unless that's just like some final sequence. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's different sized worms in the deep desert. Some of them are giant, some of them are smaller. The ones that they use to make the water of life are, are much smaller because they have to drown them and they, they, they puke up the bile that creates the water of life that a Fremen Reverend Mother would drink to unlock her genetic memory. Um, so, guys, the trailer is phenomenal. This is what we waited for. This is what we've been wanting to see. All of the images that we got from this movie were great. Everything that we were hearing about this movie was phenomenal. The creative team we always knew was phenomenal. As soon as I, as soon as Denny Villeneuve was announced, it was just like my heart just like ignited with happiness and joy. And the more I heard about it, Rebecca Ferguson, Timothee Chalamet, it was just like killing it. Charlotte Rampling, you're just like you guys are killing it with this casting. And then Hans Zimmer on the score. Um, uh, John Spates on the script 
Like he wrote, like, oh, Jesus. So it's like everything that I heard about this movie was phenomenal and it was almost like, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. But it seems like it's right in front of us and it's here. The only thing that could potentially go wrong would be like studio screwing things up. and like cutting the movie because this movie needs to be three hours long period this movie needs to be three hours long period close the door shut the gate three hours long and we need the second half of it to also be three hours long we need about six hours to tell this story like i've been saying over and over and over again doing miniseries they had five and a half hours right that's what we need for this so and i think denny villeneuve is the one to do it he can pull off these long movies and I love long movies for one, for personally. If a movie can keep me engaged for three hours, give it to me. It's quarantine. I don't, because we don't even know how they're going to release this. There's no release date in the trailer, as some of you might have noticed. Um, but officially, it's still December 18th, but who knows if that's going to actually happen? Probably not. Maybe. It seems like Tenet was the test, and they haven't decided whether or not yet. So they might be going for like a digital release. I'd pay $30 to watch this. What do you guys say? Would you pay $30 to watch Dune? I would, because I'm a, obviously I would, but like with the average person, I don't know. But we'll see. If I was, if I was in charge of this whole thing, I would postpone it. I would postpone it until like the pandemic was better. But you know, I'm not in charge of things, clearly, because they keep striking down my videos. But anyway, I don't know if I've ever been this excited for a movie since like Harry Potter 8 was coming out years ago. I read the Harry Potter books throughout my entire childhood and then Harry Potter 8 came out and I was crazy excited. And this is that feeling but so much more intense because Dune is a story that's become so close to me and become such a part of my life and who I am and to see it come to the big screen like this and to see so many people get excited about it is just mind-blowing i feel like i've been holding up the torch being like guys dune is good read dune give it a chance for like the last four years or something and finally everyone's is digging it and everyone's getting into it and i couldn't be more happy thanks everyone for watching make sure you like and subscribe for more dune videos check out my ultimate guide to dune playlist and all the dune videos that i put up over the years peace out